Hi everyone and welcome along to another episode of the Celtic View podcast where we dive into some of the great interviews and features which are in this year's magazine which you can get from the club shop. Um, I'm Ryan Marr and we have a very, very special guest <laughs> alongside us today. Um, we've got Cheyenne Shorts who's just fresh from winning the League Cup yesterday with the Celtic women's team defeating Glasgow City 1-0. I mean, Cheyenne, I'm, I'm surprised you've actually made it in today. I mean, I must, the celebrations <laughs> must have went long into the night yesterday. Yes. How, how was yesterday for you? How was, oh, how was the whole day? It was amazing. It was amazing. The whole day, I mean, even like before the game, like all the girls were buzzing and it was just such a good like feeling in the locker room. Like you could just tell that everybody was so pumped and so ready and yeah, it was amazing obviously. And last night we came back, celebrated and it was, it was awesome. What did it feel like this morning then to wake up knowing that you were the league cup winners it was so nice it was so nice to just wake up and i like looked at my phone and there's just like <laughs> all the pictures like all the stuff it was it was just awesome and yeah i mean there's no better feeling it's awesome so have you have you won anything before in your career was, no this, this is, is my first, first this is my first like pro trophy i i like won some in um college in the u.s but this is like my first real like pro title so so that yeah. must be such an incredible feeling when yeah. that final whistle goes yesterday I mean it was 1-0 yeah. the game you played you played extremely well kind of talk us through the match Thanks. but I mean as yeah. we were saying the longer it stays 1-0 the more maybe I can imagine the nerves are getting to you a little yeah. bit oh yeah I mean the whole I thought we dominated really really dominated the first half the second half they tried to come back a little bit but we were still pretty in control and um, we had such a good start like the first 10 minutes we it could have been 2-0 um which was great we just came out like on fire and I was like I think we're gonna win this game I was like this is sick this is awesome and um yeah and Caitlin had like the great header Teep hit in a perfect ball and um yeah it was it was amazing that feeling that celebration too was so fun just on the field and you had like we had such a good turnout with the fans and so that was that was great and then yes we went it was one nil at half and we just went into the locker room and we were like, guys, we just, we have it. We just really, we just got to keep it. We got to keep going and, and keep fighting. And we knew that they were going to fight hard too in the second half. And so, um, yeah, we just like, we basically were just like, we have to leave everything on the field. And we did. And um, we, we definitely could have scored a couple more goals in the second half, I think. And their keeper made some incredible saves. So, and our keeper, Rachel, made an incredible save also. Um, but yeah, we were pretty dominant. So. It was it was great and yeah the final whistle went off and it was it was amazing. Yeah, and for Caitlin Hayes to get the winner as well, she's grown up a Celtic fan. Is yeah. almost not a better person to get that winning goal. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, she's such a threat on all all um, set pieces, and so yeah, she's just, yeah we do it in training all the time in practice, and yeah, it was just great to see her get it. Just sum up the the achievement though of actually going on to to lift a trophy because it's the first time since two thousand and ten that the Celtics women team have lifted a trophy. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I didn't even realize that um, until a couple of weeks ago, somebody told me that, yeah, so it's been a long time and this is the first trophy as like a pro side also. So I think it's just really cool to be a part of and it's cool to just like write some history mm -hmm. for the club that already has so much history to begin with, so. It's not bad for yourself as well, just arriving in the summer and, and getting a winner's yeah. medal straight away. Yeah, not bad, I know. Like, this is a good start. This is a good start. Let's keep this going. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to chat a lot more about that final a little bit later on. But first yeah. of all, we're going to get to our two interviews that are taken from the magazine this year. And we've got Joe Hart, who's going to be listing some of his favourite songs. And we also have newly cut winner, Catherine McGovern as well, someone you know very well, who's also yeah. going to tell us about the power of music in the dressing room. So let's get to those two interviews now. Did you get any tunes that would remind you of even like when you were growing up? Songs that you'd like to say that were, that were being played in the house or anything like that? Yeah, Queen. Um, anything by Queen is huge. Um, really, really big for me. I really enjoyed Queen growing up. Uh, I really, but I'd say actually the more, the, the older I've got, the more I appreciate the Rolling Stones. Um, Symphony for the Devil. I I really enjoy that tune. Yeah. Great great build up. Um, 
threatens to get going and never does. I think it really plays with you, that song. It really plays with you. You don't really quite know what's coming next and what the point of it is, if I'm honest. But yeah, I really like that tune. So yeah, I'd say that one. And um, Oasis, uh, Don't Look Back in Anger, is just, it's one of the best, I don't know. I don't even know what it is. I, I try and make sense of Oasis and what they're singing about and what they're trying to say. And it's, I, I love the, uh, the Supersonic documentary. Love listening to them. Obviously lucky enough to have met Noel a few times. Liam's been at the games. Um, I just think they were special. They were really special on what they did in, in that era. But um, Don't Look Back in Anger is something I'd sing. I've sung on a few initiations. And um, yeah, I do like that song. Yeah, because they, I mean, it's interesting. They obviously, as you said, you were lucky enough to meet Noel because they're so synonymous with, you know, wearing their hearts and their sleeves when it comes to their football club as well. Yeah, yeah, they really are. Um, and they and they they support City when when City was City, you know. Yeah. And I, I really respect that about them. And um, that that's what I love about Manchester City, to be honest. That 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 era, those kind of fans are the kind of are the reason why I love the football club. Um, and when I joined it, what 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 was really special? You know, what they do now, what the team specifically do now is great. And you know, good luck to them. But the reason why I love that club is because of that heart and soul of. Um, that Manchester, they're, they're proud of their, you know, it's proud to be affiliated with their team no matter what goes on. Um, and I think they really represent that. Yeah. Because also, uh, which I thought was really nice, when Don't Look Back in Anger became the sort of anthem of the city, uh, you know, after the Manchester Arena tragedy and the yeah. bombing that actually brought, uh, you know, there was just something really hopeful about when, you know, people started singing that song. And it was, it was quite beautiful, actually, when you saw people in Manchester and that vigil just spontaneously starting to sing it? I think it was um, it was very galvanising. And I remember being at the uh, the fundraising event, the, the fundraising thing at the Lancaster, Lancashire Cricket Ground and the anticipation that maybe the boys were going to sing together. In the end, it was Chris Martin and Liam, but um, Live Forever as well. Wow. It's, they are, they're really special songs. And uh, yeah, they, they resonate really well with Man. You know, I'm not I'm not Mancunian, but I'm I'm almost an adopted one with how long I've lived there and, and how I feel about the place, and that really does really does work. Yeah, were they a band that you ever got to see live? Uh, no, I'm never together. I've seen I've seen um, Noel perform and I've yeah. seen Liam perform, but I've never seen them perform together. But um, I quite like that. I quite like the fact that they've stuck to their principles. Um, they just don't get on, do they? They're beautiful together, but they just don't get on. Yeah. Because the other thing I was wondering, you know, like often you see that idea of rock stars wanting to become footballers. The, the footballers, I did you ever, you know, fancy, I quite, I quite fancy the, the rock star world? Um, I don't know who doesn't? The madness of it looks fun, but, you know, I, I think it's it's quite easy to see that there's uh, there's downsides to it. And I, I really like what I do. I wouldn't change what I do for, for anything or anyone. Yeah. Uh, no, I listen, we're glad of that as well. <laughs> First thing I was going to ask you, Kathleen, was uh, in terms of music, how how much either do you enjoy that? How important is it to you just even as a way of relaxing or even sometimes, you know, you see players getting ready for games and when they come into the ground, they put the headphones on. Is that, do you use music quite a lot? I, I would use it quite a lot, but I'm in charge of the music in the changing room, so it's always my phone connected. So, um, But you can all listen to the same playlist, or especially before a game, I would listen to the same kind of kind of music to get you up for a game, because there's more music that'll probably get you up for a game than, than other music. Yeah. So how did you how did you come to be the dish, dressing room DJ then? Well, I was quite one of the young ones, and then uh, Kelly put it on me one time. Kelly caught, put it like, she was like, oh, connect your phone and then ever since it was either me or Chloe but it's usually always put on me because my, my music is quite decent. <laughs> yeah because I wonder because I always wonder that is there a, is there a pressure either because obviously you've, there's certain songs that people want to hear before the game but then I suppose if you get a good result after the game then you're, you're starting the party tunes in. Uh, it's kind of similar music the, the party songs are probably as well before the game because it's kind of like up to like upbeat music that we'll listen to in the changing room before a game. So it's kind of kind of similar music that we've listened to if we win after a game, to be honest. Yeah. 
Because I say, do, do some of the players still, do they still sit in the, the dressing room with the headphones on listening to their own things? Um, in, when we went to Champions League, there was a, it was kind of like a mix. Um, but like, no, not really like in the changing room when we're playing like on a Sunday really or like a week, a week ga- weekend, like weekday game. Um, yeah. You never, everybody just kind of listens to the music because it's kind of like Murray as a team, I think, if people are listening to the speaker kind of thing. Yeah. So, but now nah, you don't. If he's listening to the speaker in the changing room on a Sunday, because I've seen I've seen pictures of Chloe bringing the big massive speaker for the speaker. The I, I know that's that's the biggest one. But we um, at Airdrie, there's like another another one that's already there for us, which is louder than what Chloe's is. So it's it's better. So it's like you could hear it for like being out in the pitch to the changing room. Right. <laughs> so loud it is. I suppose it's part of that. It becomes like part of the the pre-match ritual, I guess, that, that people want to hear that. Because, as you say, it's, it's a bit like when people go to the gym or certain music mm-hmm. they want to, to kind of get them in the mood and get them really up for the game. Aye. Um, as, as I say, like it's kind of the similar music, just a different playlist probably for each game. Um, but, like, especially all the people from that are from Scotland kind of kind of like the music that you play, but maybe other people are kind of different. They like maybe older tunes because they're a bit older, but most Aye. people in the changing room like the ones that, that are played anyway. Right. Well, as long as listen, as long as they keep asking you every week to choose the music, then you must be doing <laughs> music, something right. And I know exactly. <laughs> so you can read both of those interviews in full in this year's edition of the Celtic View, which again can be purchased from the club store at the moment. And Kathleen McGovern, in that interview there, she was talking about how she's in charge of the music in the dressing room. Do you like her yes. music? <laughs> <laughs> um, it goes back and forth. I think we're like kind of superstitious about the music. Um, we have certain songs that we play like first set like there's certain songs that we have to play and sometimes she like mixes it up but I like it I like all the music she plays I think um sometimes they sometimes she plays some like I don't know if it's like Scottish music or like what it is but so for some of the foreigners like we don't know what, what is it what's <laughs> I don't know like right. I don't know what it is but sometimes like all of the girls and maybe it's like um more of like a like britain music that Mm -hmm. like we don't know obviously i'm from the us so sometimes they play things and i'm like i don't know what this is but i'll go along with it (laughs) as long as it gets you going for the match yeah exactly i'm like yeah it's fine (laughs) well let's chat a little bit more about the the game yesterday then and actually about the run to the final because i mean you've done it the hard way you beat rangers in the quarterfinals hibs in the semi-finals who won the last four league Mm -hmm. cups Mm -hmm. and then defeating glasgow city in the final who have been so dominant in Scottish football over the last 10 to 15 years. Yeah, I know. I mean, it couldn't have been a harder run. Um, and I mean, we knew coming in that it was going to be tough when once we saw the draw. And yeah, I think the biggest thing was beating Rangers first at their field, which is amazing. Um, yeah, that was a really tough game. They're obviously a really good side. Same thing with Hibs. Um, I think in all of the cup games, it's it just adds like another level of like intensity and fight. Um, but our team is, our team is so good, and we I think have grown a lot like since through like the season playing through all these games. And so I think yesterday was just kind of like a show of how hard you've been working and like, things clicking and coming together. And yeah, it went really smoothly. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. they've moved now to the, the professional model in the last couple of years. Mm. The the Celtic team. So when you were coming in in the summer. How much of an emphasis was it in trying to get a piece of silverware? Yeah, no, for sure it was. I think when I came in, um, we were starting off with the Champions League. So that was kind of like the first main focus, which was obviously one of the goals of the team. Um, first time in the Champions League. And then, yeah, we obviously wanted a trophy. We wanted to be back into the Champions League next year. So we have obviously like team goals to get to. And so, yeah, that's, that's the first one off the list. But actually getting a medal... How much do you think that can help the progression of the team as we are sort of moving forward, having mm-hmm. having turned professional a couple of years ago? Yeah, I think it's huge. I think um, it's huge for, I think, just women's football in general, like it being professional and getting like more players to want to come and play. And I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's just amazing. <laughs> There's such a mix at this moment in time as well. And the women's team, you know, you've got yourself from the States, mm-hmm. we've got people from... China, we've got people from all around the world. Mm-hmm. So how are you all finding settling into Glasgow and Scotland oh, at the moment? Yeah, it's it's so fun. We actually have, there's a bunch of the girls all live, we all live um, right near each other. And the other night we went out to dinner 
and it was nine of us at the table and nobody was from the same country <laughs> and we were all just chatting and just like having such a good time and it was just it's been great it's been awesome and it's cool that football like can bring us all together and meet people that we never would have met before what are you finding the hardest to adapt and i take it the weather must be yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was just gonna say the accents i've gotten used to now at the beginning it was it was a little bit rough um, but the weather for sure is is tough because where I'm from um, in Denver, it's sunny like 300 days of the year. Yeah. So coming here, I was like, oh no, I knew it was going to be bad. Did you pack your jacket when you came? Or? Yeah. Oh, trust me. Yeah. I <laughs> And it's so funny because like even at trainings, you can you can like tell if you like look around who's from here and who's not <laughs> based on like what they're wearing. Like I'm every day and like but like my big puffy coat, like snood, hat, like all of it, gloves. And then you see like some people like Warrington and like McGov and they're just in like shorts and a, <laughs> and a um, short sleeve shirt. And I'm like, you guys are crazy. It's like snowing right now. But yeah, I think that's the hardest, the weather for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, just looking back again yesterday, there was a record crowd for a game in Scotland. What did that add to the game? Did that help boost you and help push oh, yeah. you forward? For sure. Oh, I mean, the crowd helps so much. It's, I mean, it's huge. And it was so nice, like for all the people that came out, it was freezing. And so I know yeah. like for them to come and stay and um, I'm just glad that we got to win a trophy for them. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, it was great. And hopefully now for yourselves, does that give you sort of real motivation for the rest of the season to now try and kick on and get even more success? Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, it kind of gets the ball rolling a little bit and I think gets everybody just a little bit more excited about like what's to come um yeah it's gonna be great yeah well hopefully there's, there's a lot more success to come now yes. um at this part cheyenne we always look back at a fan discussion point each week so myself and louise were on last week and we're chatting about the furthest distances that we've traveled to watch celtic play and we asked fans to send in there so thank you so much for sending in all of your options i'm just going to read out a few of their stories okay. now so we've yeah. got um paul fitzpatrick who said that he took his wife to Liverpool to watch Celtic play against Liverpool, but he didn't tell his wife that they were going to see Celtic on the, se the uh. second night when they were going. Um, so that was a surprise to her. Um, we also have Kyle Kirkwood. Who had, there's a similar story about he went to Australia for a year and he took his wife to Brisbane for the weekend, but again, didn't tell her that we're going to go watch a Celtic uh. match. Now, I mean, guys, come on, you need to look after your, your <laughs> other half. See, I, I don't want any breakups on our watch here. So. It's a nice surprise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, we also have uh, Clancy on Twitter who says, for every home game, it entails a 24-hour trip, leaving at 1am on Saturday morning from Southwest Ireland and getting home at 1am on Sunday morning. I mean, that's wow. that's some that's some achievement. That's yeah. some going, Clancy. Well done for that. <laughs> um, we've also got Andy Duffy as well, who's saying he went to watch Celtic play in Rome against Lazio. Mm -hmm. And he said he fell about five rows in front when Encham scored the winner in the last minute of the game, but said it's definitely mm -hmm. worth it. And we also have Joe O'Rourke, who says he travelled to Dubai for a, a US tour in 2010, mm -hmm. somewhere you know very well. Mm -hmm. And he went to matches in Philadelphia, Toronto and Boston, all in all about mm -hmm. 7,000 miles. So fair play to you for that one. Wow. So thank you so much for, for sending those in. Um, now for this week's discussion point um, we're going to look at we've got a great feature in the Celtic View magazine this year about Celtic 100 years ago back in 1921 now I'm too young to remember Celtic back then right. and you've only just joined in the summer right. so I'm not going to ask you about that <laughs> um, but for the discussion point we want to maybe look back at a moment in Celtic's history that you maybe don't remember and you would like to go back to in the call so I think for myself for example and maybe I was just a bit too young for when Celtic, they got to the UEFA Cup final in 2003. Mm. Um, and I was just a little bit young for that. So I don't quite remember it. So for mm. me, that would be that be my moment. Um, I don't know for yourself, is there any sort of moments in football history you look back on and think, oh, I really wish I could have been at that game? Right. Um, I mean, I think for Celtic, I think seeing the Lisbon game, yeah. the Lions and them winning that title, I think that would be really cool. Just like now knowing a little bit about the history of the club and seeing even the fans like how how incredible the fans are at even just like home games so I think that game would be just amazing this I know I would love I've that. seen so many like documentaries of that where yeah. fans you know back then people didn't really fly and they were all just getting buses together right. getting cars yeah. driving to Portugal incredible. and it just seemed like such an amazing yeah. experience it gives me chills thinking about it I would yeah that would be I think that no, would I think be that, nice. that's a good show yeah. that's a good show um, but yeah definitely send in your ideas and we'll send We'll read out the, the best ones in next week's edition. So tweet 
the Celtic View with the hashtag View Podcast to do that. Um, now, just to sort of round off, we're just going to have a little bit of a look uh, at the men's team who've had a really fantastic week. They had a great result here against Hearts and then a fantastic performance against Dundee United on mm-hmm. Sunday. Uh, and this week they had play Real Betis here on Thursday night and then they play Motherwell, who I think you're playing next week as well, aren't you? Um, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've got two big games again yeah. this, this weekend. But I don't know... Do you get much of a chance to, to watch the men's team's games? Have you had much of a chance to yeah. mingle with them at all? Um, not necessarily mingle with them because it's hard with COVID and like different bubbles and stuff. But I have gotten to meet a couple of them, which was really cool. Um, and a bunch of us girls come to the games a lot. And there's so much, obviously the home games and there's so much fun. We love it. So hopefully we can come to some of this week's yeah. games. Yeah. How have you been impressed with the team so far this season? I mean, things are yeah. going quite well. At yeah. The moment. Yeah. They're doing really well. Um, yeah, it's it's impressive. It's, obviously, they're so good, so it's it's fun to watch them and kind of even like learn from them just watching. Um, yeah, and I can't wait to watch more. Yeah, and yeah. this season in particular, but in general with Celtic, there's a real emphasis in attacking front foot football. Is that something mm-hmm. that for the women's team you try to replicate as well? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think, and I think we saw yesterday, like the way that we came out, we, we try to do that. Um, and just come out and we worked so much on like our pressing and formation and all of this stuff so I think yeah we definitely try to implement that too. Yeah well, so hopefully yeah. two more wins for the, the Celtics men team this week. Now I think final word again just just mm-hmm. has to go back to yourself after after that game yesterday. Just just sum up again just what that means to you lifting that trophy yeah. yesterday. Oh it's incredible I mean it's hard to put it into words the feeling of like lifting the trophy for like all of the fans and the confetti and like the fire was really like a whole production <laughs> um but it was just the best feeling in the world it's hard to be it's amazing. How do you get how do you bring yourself back down to earth to get into training again this I week? I don't know I don't know we're back in on Wednesday and I think everyone's just on cloud nine right now and we have today and tomorrow to kind of reset um, and then get back to work for yeah. the next one. Me and Louise yeah. said last week I, we were interested to see what um, what Fran Alonso might wear in the final, and he, he definitely didn't disappoint. He, he did a, not He disappoint. had a change of clothes as well, <laughs> yeah. didn't he? He was, yeah, yeah. he was well prepared. He was. He's so funny. I had some of my like friends and family in the states watching the game, and they were saying that in like the celebration, the camera was just following Fran. They were like, <laughs> "He's so amazing! Like he's so into it. He's like, he would have thought that." He just played 90 and like won it. Like he's, yeah. So yeah, it was great. You may have His to support. peel him off the wall actually in training. I know, Wednesday. seriously. I know he'll definitely be in on rondos. He's going to be, it's, yeah, <laughs> he's out of control. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for joining us, Cheyenne. And then Thanks. from behalf of everyone at Celtic Football Club, congratulations thank on you. winning the League Cup Thanks. yesterday. Thank you as well for, for tuning in this week and make sure to join us again for next week's edition. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.